So hello everybody, uh, this is uh, one of two last uh, workshops for us together. Um, so please let me know in the chat if you can hear me and um, can see everything and you're ready to work. And you have template 16.2 ready for work, I will drop the uh, link for the um, uh, Mega Drive as well, just in a second. But I think today is going to be quite fun and very addictive as well. <laughs> so I will explain that in a second. You think that sometimes gaming or programming is addictive. You have not seen what is the reinforcement learning. <laughs> um, so I see one plus in the chat. So I assume at least one person is ready to work. Uh, the link for Mega is here. By the way, I started also grading the stuff and I saw that some of the, the works that were submitted um, were not working or had some issues. So just, just to make sure that um, I, I'm checking the actual uh, solution so it's not like you just submit it and think that uh, you would get uh, the 100% score. So anyways, <clears throat> so today is going to be quite exciting and fun um, session because the reinforcement learning, so we will look at the, the, the Q value type of reinforcement learning and tomorrow the policy gradient is the, something that you can use for almost anything like for the decision making or any other task where you can have uh, some kind of uh, uh, input as, as your ground truth where you have say that this is okay or this is not okay you know like uh, if you give the score or some like intermediate uh, reward that would be perfect but if you don't have it anything uh, that you give the model uh, gives um, you can learn you can learn from anything basically so the idea is that you see the game so for example in this case this is a um, computer game uh, of I don't know like snake or something and you add the convolution models. So you can imagine that you could have a, a camera that looks at your phone and learns how to play a game. And the model then produces the outputs of uh, what you should do at every time step. And uh, uh, this, the, yeah, so the way I will add some other images about the way how it works and then the loss functions that are the most important things and at any point, if something is not clear, please ask, because as I say, only two sessions left. So uh, the more you ask, the better chance of fulfilling the homeworks, uh, at least these ones. So, and then we will, then we will end up with, with this course and those of you who are good at it and want to continue this. Um, so please contact me and we, we, we can, uh, put together some research work for you, uh, either for the thesis or for uh, commercial stuff or whatever. So anyway, here there is the, the idea how it works. So we have an agent. We will also have a class agent today. So in the agent class, we have a brain, you know. <laughs> so the brain is the model, uh, the, DQ, the, the deep learning model, right? And we have environment. So the environment this, this time is going to be the open AI. Um, so the open AI uh, have gym. This is an environment where you, where you can easily choose a lot of small games. Open AI gym, and we will work with Lunar Lander. So there is a very fun, uh, nice game where you need to land the uh, Lunar Lander. So it's like on the moon, landing on the moon, right? Using the uh, just the so, so today we're going to use the discrete inputs. But, um, uh, but, 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 tomorrow we're going to use also continuous inputs. Uh, so the idea is that you uh, control your spaceship, you try to land on the moon here on that part. In the, like in a moment when you start coding it, you will see how it actually, the game works. You can play it probably with, with uh, by hand, but um, what we want to do is uh, make the agent learn the game. So. Um, so it basically, so the agent knows what to do at any time step based 
on the inputs. So there is an, one interesting thing here. We are using the Marco decision process. Marco uh, the the decision process. So this is MDP, and there is a, like partial observable and fully observable Markov decision process. What it means is basically very simple: that um, this co-current time step of where we are right now describes the whole game. So uh, this the idea that in the chess, like uh, if you look at the chess table with our, all of your um, your figurines on the, on the board then that state of all of the uh, all of the figurines on the board is is the uh, perfect representation of the game and you don't need anything else so what is not the perfect representation of the game is when you have some kind of history that is not represented in the current state but is very important for the um, agent to get the reward so if there is a history there then you cannot use this kind of approach of course the uh, deep learning type of models can have a, a time series that we looked before, right? So if you add a time series here, then we, we, then we can solve that problem with the Markov decision process. But in this case, this is not going to be the case. We're going to use just the one state. So uh, the way how it then works is the, uh, by the way, that could be a cool homework to add uh, like multiple uh, states. So I mean like the previous time steps. But anyways, I will think about it. I just don't want to make it too hard. So here there is the ST, so that's a vector. So the vector that represents like the um, like height from the ground, like your position in the X axis, like your angle, your speed and everything. So that is the state, right? A vector ST. So then we also have the reward. So the rewards are mainly the zeros or negatives. So the negatives are when you are using the uh, fuel in a very inefficient manner. You know, like if you're like just shooting the rockets when it's not needed, then you have negative reward. Also, if you crash your spaceship, you also have negative reward. But if you land your spaceship in the, the middle part of these two flags, then you have a very high positive reward. So that's one. Then we have also the actions. So the actions are discrete actions. We need to send the action index of which action we want to take. And if you remember the classification task, in the classification task we have a vector of the classes with the probabilities. So, and then we choose the current class. This is very similar to that, except this, guy, this time we don't have probabilities, but we have the uh, values. So we will, we're going to use very specific type of model uh, that's based on the Q value function. And this is really old type of approach, actually. So just a second, I will try to find my LaTeX. Um, so there is, there is, we're going to start working with equations quite quickly. So, so the reward is one thing. And what we want to do is to uh, maximize cumulative reward. So what is cumulative reward in this case? Uh, this is very simple equation, except what is this? This is not what I wanted. Copy. Okay, hopefully this is going to be the equation. It seems too big for equation. Okay, yeah, this is a high resolution equation. <laughs> so anyway, here we have the cumulative reward with the discount factor gamma. So that's a very important equation to start understanding how all this stuff works. Um, okay, something is lagging my computer. Let me check. Let's see which process is taking my resources. Mm -hmm. Not really sure. Maybe uh, I was I will run some scripts for the grading. Maybe that one is taking my processes. Okay, I will close. Anyway, so the uh, cumulative reward. Um, so that is with regard to all of time steps, cumulative uh, reward, and this is discount factor gamma. Discount. Factor. So what discount factor means, by the way, if you see there is a, a, 
like uh, it is uh, power of t. So it means um, the kind of uh, if there is a, if this discount factor is something like zero point five or or zero or something like that. So the the more we square it, the the less effect of it we get. So what it means is that. Uh, how important is the rewards in the future? So what we want to do is that, uh, for example, for this game, like if we just make a small mistake when we are approaching the uh, moon surface, then we end up in terrible disaster. So that means that uh, the reward between kind of two time steps is very important. That's why maybe the uh, kind of... Um, the discount factor should be um, should be lower. So maybe a discount factor should be something like uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. But in the games like mazes, where where for example you you go in the labyrinth and try to find the exit, and the exit is very sparse, maybe the discount factor should be much higher because it is very hard to find the the um, exit point. And uh, we don't want to diminish the value of that uh, event. So that event is very important. This is very sparse, very uh, very far away in the future. That's why the discount factor should be large. If the games are very reactive, the discount factor should be lower. So that's that's quite important stuff here. Then uh, already a long time ago, there there was um, before actually the deep learning. Uh, you started working with uh, something that's uh, that is a uh, Bellman's equation. People started working with Bellman's equation. Okay, let's go next slide. And that is uh, the modeling of the Q function, Bellman's equation. So in this case, the idea is that if you have some kind of table that stores all of your uh, states and actions, uh, or in this case, the queue can be also a model, but the queue could be also like physical, like, like Excel table or something. So if we can store all of our states and all of our actions, uh, or like in columns, rows, and add the queue values, what is the outcome of that? So of course, this is not working with with like continuous variables. You know, like if this state is continuous, like in this case with 0 0.1 and, and so on, you cannot really make proper table. You, you might discretize it, but it will not be perfect. So, but if you could, if for example, the states are very discrete, like maybe the states could be discrete in some kind of hashes of like games like chess or, 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 or like uh, checkers or anything else. So uh, that could work. And then, then you don't need deep learning at all. You just um, accumulate experience in those Q tables. So, and the way that works is that that at at Q table or the Q function at S A position, we want to add the uh, reward of this time step plus the uh, Q value where we have the maximum Q value depending on the action prim. So maybe I can show you more. So the if we just select Q right by the state of the next state t plus one. So because we we when we run our game, uh, we can look one state before right, and that would be st. And the current state could be this one, and the reward could be this one that that came from this state with this action. And for the next state. So we don't know which action we should take. So we, uh, we, we ask the Q table or the Q function. We ask what is the probable Q value for every action. So for action one, action two, action three. And then we choose that which is the highest value. And then we plus it together and store in this uh, cell location. And the idea is that uh, gradually it would converge to have this kind of effect, so it would have this kind of effect. But also, of course, there is a discount factor here missing. But anyways, it would gradually go to that that point. So then, uh, if we uh, try to apply this stuff for deep learning, 
Um, actually, it's not much different. It's just the only thing is uh, we replace that um, we replace the table with the model. Uh, we also add the discount factor, so there should be actually added the discount factor. Let me add it. Um, I'm not sure, like original Bellman's equation, did it have the discount factor? I think it should have. Just a second, I will add it. We'll wait the, the visuals of the DQN could also be improved. Okay, gamma. Okay, let's avoid some confusion. Add the discount factor also here. Well, everything got frozen a little bit. Interesting. Okay. Okay, okay. we will start coding just in a second. Anyway, uh, so if you have any questions, also ask, please. So um, here we have the loss function. So the loss function for the model Q, the Q value function model. And if you look carefully at this equation, so first of all, it means if the state is terminal, so the last state, T last, means a terminal state, terminal state. Terminal state can be positive or negative. So depending on the game, right? So maybe there is a game where you need to survive. And if this is the last state, the end of the episode, then uh, we just uh, want to use the uh, this last reward value here and uh, try to kind of fit it to, the, to that value that we have from the queue. Um, probably uh, this could be also a little bit improved when I'm thinking about it. Um, pro so I will, well, I will make, a, like, make a small test. I never actually thought about it a little bit. So uh, anyway, but the, 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 this, this part is, is the same as in Bellman equation, the first thing. And the second thing is just the mean square error. So MSA, you can see here. It could be also MS, it could be also M mean absolute error. So it doesn't matter which one. So the, uh, the mean square error part is just this model output um, subtracted from this part and squared, right? About this second part, generally this equation should work, but I have ideas how to make it a little bit better actually. So uh, this is very basic DQN. Uh, it means, um, it means, it means, um, well, it's kind of lost in my mind. What was deep, uh, deep Q network, right? So that, that is the, um, the way, I think it's from 2015, the first time they use it, Deep Q network with that Atari games. By the way, Atari games are also available in the uh, OpenAI gym. So that's quite cool. Anyway, let's move to the code. So I gave you the template for the lunar, lunar lander. As I, again, warning, it, it's, it's really addictive because when you start training it, you will see that uh, it's, some, it's kind of, you, you control it in some way, another way, like the proper way how to do this is would be to make, um, proper way would be to, uh, to make a grid search. We already have the arguments here. So the grid search and document everything with the uh, CSVs and uh, like uh, plots and stuff. But if you run it one by one, it's really addictive. So anyway, here the, you need to install the uh, gym. So up here, there is a link how to install it. To install, of course, you can just drop here in the terminal, open the terminal tab here, and then just copy the pip install open AI gym. Um, Yes, it is possible that for the four Windows guys, you need to have the uh, some kind of um, C++ distribution tools. That that is something that that unfortunately you need to do. Right? Sorry for that. Yes, that that could be possible that you need those because of course if you publish things for the Microsoft, then a lot of things usually are not. Um, like pure binaries, there, they have like, for example, .NET framework and stuff, but this in this case, this is a C++, so not sure. Anyway, um, here, 
Okay, so we have a model here. Uh, so okay, but let's let's go through the code first, and then I will then we'll start coding. So here there is a DQN agent with all of the hyperparameters, right? The o and also some parts that are just necessary for the training. So the optimizer and the replay memory. So those those two things you don't need when you have the actual production model. Are you kidding me? Six gigabytes to download Microsoft tools. That's not normal. So hopefully, hopefully you can do this, but uh, I'm really sorry for those of you on the Windows. So anyway, here, uh, uh, here there is the optimizer and replay memory. Okay, then there we have the act here. So the, with the act here, there's one very important stuff going on. So we have the random choice of the action. So the random choice of the action is called epsilon greedy method epsilon greedy for the dqn and stuff they have many options how to do the exploration so exploration and primarily you want to do exploration uh, when you start training your agent later stages might not be that important to do the exploration but in very beginning that's quite important so the exploration stuff here uh, so the random randomness and the, also the epsilon is decaying. So what I mean by that is every frame that you play the games, uh, the epsilon becomes smaller and smaller up till 10% of the random chance for uh, some action. Then we have the uh, one by one execution of the model and trying to get the Q values and then um, getting the maximum Q value as our uh, action. So for, you can imagine for every action you have a vector and in that vector you have a Q value. So what, it, what you have here is for example Q all, so this will be like a pseudo code. So there will be up, so let's say there will be left, right, um, up, right. So, so if you have three types of, uh, types of actions and then for each of those actions, we try to predict the R cumulative reward. So in this case, there could be, let's say, uh, 100, minus 200, and then 33.3, for example. And we want to choose the action that is most likely to give the highest cumulative reward. So we choose the action left in this case, and then get the action index and send the action index to the environment. So then we have another uh, function called replay. The replay is necessary because uh, we want to train our model with batches, right? We don't want to train model which, with every frame in the game. That would be crazy. So we want to do the, the batches. So we first accumulate the batches in replay memory. Then we sample randomly, uh, like uh, 32 samples per batch or what we have there. And then we run the loss function here and train the model on those data that we have. So what data we have is the state of the time step zero, action time step zero, um, then the reward time step one, because we execute the action on the state uh, T zero and then get reward T one. Then we have also uh, the state T one. And also we have the flag for saying, is this the last terminal state or not? So that's what we have here. Then here we have the uh, environment setup where we just say that lunar lander should be loaded. Uh, we have the space information that there is a position of, uh, so observation space the, that there is a X, Y axis, the velocities and stuff like for the Markov decision process to be uh, enabled. Then the action space, how many actions can we take? Okay, there is uh, some kind of strange stuff here. There should not be batch size. I don't know, like this, this is some kind of rudimentary stuff. So anyways, without batch size, because batch size inside the arguments. So then we are having the episodes. So we have thousand episodes, for example, we want to play. And uh, for every episode, we restart the environment. And then we do the maximum number of steps. So um, you will see that the environments have tricky things. Sometimes the agent do not understand that 
it should find something good and it should just like stay forever in one place and that, that could also happen and that's why we have some uh, basically these maximum steps. And then we have is render flag inside the arguments that you can flip in the, like up, up there in the code and it will just render the game, uh, game frames in case if uh, the if the previous time step got a uh, positive, uh, positive reward for the games, like, like the, uh, the cumulative reward at the end. So what I mean by that is that the agent learns something good and then we want to see how it looks like, how it plays the game. So that's one thing. Also, maybe we should add that I want to see how the game is played in very beginning when the agent don't understand anything. Uh, let's see how we could do this. So the LAN scores, okay, let's make it in two parts. You, you can leave it as, as you have here the code, but I just want to make it so that I can show you how the agent plays the game when it don't understand anything. So here, if this is a zero or, or this is a something inside the memory, then we can play it. So that's, that's just a small change here. Anyway, so then we play the uh, so then we uh, feed the agent with the state and predict what should we do next. Then we do the game, uh, accumulate the rewards. There is one small hack to discourage uh, very long uh, sequences. Maybe you can we can even have it even higher discouragement. Uh, so, anyways, I don't, let's leave it minus minus hundred. I have an idea what to change as well here. Anyway. So that will be fine. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. And, and here we have some plots. So for the plots, we have the scores, we have the loss and we have the steps. So how long it, the agent is alive in every episode. Anyway, so to run this stuff for the first time, probably we should first implement the the model itself. So the model can be anything actually. You can make your own model, what you want. So um, just because you can make it what you want, I will probably not show it in, not drop it in the uh, jump board. So you can, you just need to understand the basic idea that you have the input state, that is the input uh, of the linear layer, right? Where you have the uh, state size, right? Then we want out as a hidden size. Then, then we want to have something there, uh, like a nonlinearity. This could be leaky rel, for example. We could also have here to encourage a little bit better, uh, like the convergence and stuff, to add here the uh, layer norm, for example. Uh, so this could be the normalized shape because before, so we want that the hidden state for the, for this layer would be centered around zero. So the layer norm kind of helps with that. There are different other norms that you already know that can also be useful. Maybe this could be also a group norm with some groups that could maybe also be useful anyway. Uh, and then a linear layer again. So if you want, you can add more layers. If you add too many layers, maybe it will not help as well. It will just, because the environment is super noisy already. And if you add even more layers, maybe it is even more noisier. So anyway, this, this, this is one, one option of the model. The input, sta input state is the state size. Then there is a hidden size and then the action size. And we don't want to limit the output with a sigmoid or softmax or whatever because the output values can be from minus thousands to plus thousands. Like this is actual Q value there. Okay, and I, I, I think I just, I will add this also to the jump board just in case somebody, um, I don't know, like should be able to do your own model here, but just in case I will add that as well. So, 
please do that one. And let's then I go to the uh, to the loss function. Okay, maybe just to make it a little bit uh, more synchronized today. So let me know when the model is ready. So is model ready? Uh, plus minus in the chat. If some problems, let me know. And meanwhile, I will do some experiment that I that I had a day to do when I was looking at that equation. Okay, I see some pluses coming in, that's great. Okay, so then we go to the um, to the loss function here. The loss function is also nothing too difficult actually. Um, so sometimes I give the students to, to like to do this uh, themselves and then, but um, in this case it seems like that a lot of you are struggling to get along, so I will try to help you. So uh, here, um, let's do this step by step. So first, first we want to uh, simulate what the model knows right now. So we, are, we regards to those inputs, we know we know already what was the output. So that's great. But we want also to simulate what is the situation with the current weights. So when we can do this by having the Q T zero. So if you want to have the Q value at T zero and here we will have all values because of course for every, every action we want to calculate that. So self Q model forward and we need to do, give the state T zero. So with the state T zero, what, what are the, all of the um, Q values that like the actions that we could take. Um, already here there might be a difference because the action that we executed maybe is uh, not that action that, that, that this model would take, for example. Um, um, but we will use that action that we stored. So the way how we can use that action that we stored, so just to repeat what I just said is that the QT at this moment, there is high probability that it will not take the action T0, but we will assume that it, we should take that action. And the way how to do this is by selecting for every sample in the batch. So first of all, we need to have uh, the selection indexes for every sample of the batch. So that's easy, let's add here idx says this is just small vector from zero till a batch size that we can use to select elements from the array. So torch arrange. So this should be in the size of the batch. Uh, so args, args batch size. I think it was, was like that. Let me check have it there. Mm -hmm. 
I hope it is like that. <laughs> okay, it should be like that. The batch size, batch size. If, if it will not work, then we will fix it, but it should be like batch size. So then uh, this we move to device, so Rx device. If we run this on the Google Colab, that is a good place to run it, then, uh, or, or with the computer with GPU, then, then we want to run it on GPU, it will be faster. So anyway, that's one. So we have the indexes for every sample in the batch. So that's, that's, that's what it is. This is nothing, nothing smart. This is just from zero till every sample in the batch, zero, one, two, three, till, till batch size. We already did this many times with different types of the code, but in this case, um, the equations might be tricky to understand, so I'm just emphasizing it. So that's one. We have that one, and we are selecting the actual actions that the model take took in the history in the replay, not what is right now the maximum value. So that's that's one interesting thing here. So then we also need to simulate the T1. So again, we run the model. Uh, we could optimize this by concatenating S, uh, T0, and T1. But in this case, uh, just to make for simplicity, it's like call it two, two times. And in this case, we don't know, um, we don't, so we could probably try to um, get the next action as well, but for this equation to work, we, we, we kind of take the maximum value that, that is there. So a t1, and this will be the argmax of yeah, so QT arg max of dimension one. So the again we have dimension zero, the batch size. Dim zero is batch size because we are doing this for, with the with the random samples of the batch uh, from the history. You know, like we learned stuff from the history, right? So that's one. We have this one at here. AT1 here, and then we need to select QT1, QT1, and that we can select by the index itself. So QT all, and then we select indexes AT1. So we have QT here, that's great. And finally, uh, we need to calculate the, the the final Q uh, value with regards to T1. So T1 final will be the R T plus, um, so here we can, we can make the equation of those two parts with the NIF statement just in one line. So what I mean by that is that is end flag is always, so is not end flag is always zero or one. So when the episode is not ended, it is one. When the episode is ended, it is zero. So, and that's why we can uh, have this uh, vector as like a switch for that like, uh, if statement that I have on the slides. So that's quite neat trick to do this because otherwise then you need to have if, real, real if statements and uh, for every sample of the batch, it might be different. So here we have this one and then we can use orgs gamma uh, so there will be the discount factor. And here we want to use the QT1. So this one. So we have this part ready. That's great. Then we need to calculate the loss itself. So the loss, as I say, it can be mean square error or it can be absolute error or it can be anything else. Uh, so the Huber loss or, or whatever. So mean, and here the mean can be from QT0 minus QT final and squared. So if you think about it, what it is, it is that the model wants to slowly learn uh, with the small increments to uh, predict uh, uh, the uh, cumulative reward for the next step that is in the future. So it, can, it develops intuition 
like this feeling in which direction should the, the, uh, we do the actions to have the best reward for the future. So we are trying to fit the T1 to T0. That's quite a cool idea here. So if this works, I will drop this in the jump board. We'll try to run it. And probably we'll start seeing nice pictures in just in a second. Okay, it works, and I will show you the pictures as well. I don't know, like the first was the N, uh, N. That's interesting. Okay, it's pro. Okay, the N, N is because uh, the loss vector is empty. Uh, I mean, like the 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 list itself. So don't worry about that. So I will drop the replay function in the jump board, and then I will show you how it looks like. It's already quite fun to see how it works. Um, and then we'll do some updates to make it work properly. So the, 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 the most important part, the loss function, the learning uh, function of the replay. I added that to the jump board as well trying to format it really slowly. I don't know why it's lagging so much today. Not sure which process is taking so much memory for me right now. Okay, I should ex investigate that. So uh, please let me know if this is working in the chat. So, and I will show you how it should work, is replay uh, mem learning working. So plus minus or what, or some problems. So, and then I will also show it how it should look like. So sharing the full screen now, running it. So it is running. See, this is how, how the agent behaved when it don't understand anything. It just crashed in the moon surface, right? So, and when, when the agent is learned something, it would not crash in the moon surface. It would, uh, it would uh, fly really nicely. So, and if you look at the, the scores and, and the loss functions and everything, so first of all, we can see that the loss function is converging down. So that's kind of, um, kind of good these, these steps of how long steps the agent is surviving in every episode it's, a, it's increasing and the, uh, the scores is uh, kind of uh, not really great right now but, but it's, it's hopefully getting better and the learning is also very slow that is also expected so I'm getting error so if you get an error with some kind of matrices this mismatch, it seems like uh, that the error says that in dimension one, you have something not okay with the model. So the model code, if you understand what you're doing, you are changing the, um, the dimensions of the projections. So you should, you should look at the model to try to solve the problem with the mismatch dimensions. Yeah, so if you have, yeah, that's right. I, 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 so the Gins is, uh, is saying that if you have some problem with the Lunar Lander, there, there should be installed the Box2D. I already have that command in the uh, script up there. So if you look at the code, uh, we have the pip install uh, Box2D. So you can install that one as well if necessary. Uh, but the, if there is a matrices error, that's probably regards to the wrong dimensions of the model. And let's wait for some, some other people to get along with this. Uh, meanwhile, I will check my experiments that I said that I was doing.
Oh, I will check it. Um, okay, so let me know if, if this is working for you. I will see, okay, what about, okay, I lost my, my small ship. Oh no, okay, here it is. So now it's, it learned something. <laughs> It, it learned to crash in the area where where it should uh, should land, so that's that's not too bad actually. So the agent is learning something. It's it's not great, but uh, it's it's better than not understanding anything. So see again, the agent is yes, it landed only too hard a little bit, so it it crashed a little bit. So let me know if it's working. Okay, I see that, that, that some people are reporting that is it is working. So you already see that this is kind of quite fun. Um, and of course, to, to make it um, like properly working, you should uh, then um, uh, like uh, uh, configure the hyperparameters and uh, fine tune it. Uh, so it's a lot of work there. <laughs> so this is not like really that trivial, but um, at least you have a taste for it now. So you understand uh, the idea here. So let's see what we have here. So the gamma, we have the epsilons. So the, the values right now, the way how it works, it's not really that great right now. Um, it's primarily not great uh, because of the configuration. So. If we would run it for much longer time period, so I, I don't have right now in the live resources to run it properly, but I can look in uh, my Google Colab, and I can drop you in some uh, visuals, what happens if you run it for longer time period. Uh, so copy, download image. Hopefully I, I can drop this in the Jamboard, so I will show you what happens when we train it for a little bit longer. Those of you who have fast computers, GPUs, you can uh, you can train it for longer. Oh no, okay, didn't open like I wanted. Um, but what happens is that the agent, uh, like uh, most likely, learns more to um, to kind of uh, fly around and not land. <laughs> so the idea is that the agent. Um, so most likely would 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 uh, learn to sit around in in the space until the end of the episode of the limit of 300 steps and uh, then it would just uh, fail you know so but uh, if we fine tune it then we start seeing a little bit of these uh, like drops here and these drops most likely mean that the agent actually landed so that's quite cool and uh, what the, the normal way how it would be in the first beginning it just crashes then it learns to fly and then it starts learning to land again and you can control it uh, primarily by using the gamma so gamma uh, so you can try out gammas like uh, let's let you know six uh, seven nine uh, nine is something that probably you should not use so that's one. You can also try to use the uh, the other parameters, you know, like the memory size, the the, the um, epsilon, the learning rate, the the deep reinforcement learning is very famous with the huge amount of hyperparameters. Like this this model is very simple, but you will see very soon that uh, you can have really high number of parameters and um, it would make it even more difficult. And if you run it like many times, you see that addictive effect where you want to change something in your model and parameters to get the higher result. And uh, like it, it, you could spend like hours of, of just tuning it uh, if you don't use the like systematic approaches. So anyway, uh, let's do the next task. So the next task, if you look in the Jamboard, it's I think 16.3 should be. I think, and that is the priority, uh, priority, um, priority uh, memory. So there are multiple ways, and I, I sh shared you also the paper of the um, Rainbow DQN. That is the that was the paper that summarized all of the DQN uh, updates that make it uh, more powerful. 
So then the priority DQN is a pre-prioritized memory. It can be implemented in multiple ways. The way how it is implemented in Rainbow is different from our implementation. So if you take the 16.3 template, and that template looks like looks like this. So it's just a one class of replay memory. So we add that class inside our code here. By the way, you should submit uh, this code if it's working to the 16.2 and then or save it as an additional uh, additional file so you can do the next one. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to replace the replay memory. So I delete replay memory and copy inside the uh, replay priority memory here. And what is the idea is that you have, um, again, limited amount of memory. So you're adding the, the steps and deleting uh, the steps from uh, more like that are the oldest ones. So that's one. Um, yeah, so that's one. Uh, the, you could also update it in different way. So first of all, you could drop the steps that have the uh, the least value, right? That could also be done. Okay, the batch size here, there should be there should be Rx batch size or no self batch size. So self batch size, you should fix this one. So anyway. Um, you could, you could update it many ways, but the, the main idea is that you would select randomly, but not fully randomly with a weighted random or from the probabilities and those probabilities you get by the TD error. So the TD error is the error for every sample with regards to the, the Q function. So if you have the more error for this transition of the states, we want to have this uh, higher priority for the learning, right? So uh, that's that's one thing. So we can use the replay priority memory down here instead of the replay memory. That's one change. And then we need to change also another part here. So it, it, it there is not many changes from the uh, original version, but there are a few small ones. And again, uh, this you already see so many opportunities for research, like the replay memory, uh, it can be combined with uh, some kind of embedding tables and stuff like that, and, and uh, like some kind of latent representations. There, there could be a lot, lot of ideas what you could explore, or the way the strategies, how you update the uh, priority uh, table. So there is a lot of ideas. Anyway, um, so the changes where we need to change it is in the replay itself here, because first of all, the sample is not giving us batch anymore, but also the indexes. So there will be the, um, so this will be the replay, edxs. So indexes for the samples that we want then to update because after the learning the error we want to update it so and the error itself it's also very easy to add here error like that and the error is that just the squared error here and that we will add before the mean here so that's great the only thing missing again is that we need to update the replay memory. So replay memory update priorities. And here the idea is that we want to use the replay indexes and update by TD error. So the uh, states that had the uh, states that had the uh, the biggest error with regards to this function that, that had the, the most, the, the, the worst intuition, that don't understand the feeling of where we should go, those states should have higher priorities for selecting as the training samples. We want to eliminate, delete those states. We want, we want that model can understand that these, are, these states should be, uh, the actions in those states should be changed. So that's, that's, that's the, the rationale behind the 
um, priority replay memory. So we are not just randomly selecting the states, but uh, selecting the states in a manner to um, encourage to learn model those parts that um, that are kind of uh, more with the valuable information, the events that happened that are valuable. We just don't want to learn from all of the events, but just from the val valuable events. So we added this one. I will try to run it. I added also this to the jump board to slide number six. And let's see if it works. Okay, this is the dumb agent. The dumb agent actually did pretty well. <laughs> it, uh, it landed uh, directly uh, down below, but uh, this is not always the case. So anyway, it seems like that the, the agent is working. Uh, at least the, the, we'll see what when the training kicks in, but it seems like it's working. So we'll show, share the full screen. Sorry, you didn't see actually the, uh, you didn't see you didn't see the, the way how the agent crashed in the very first episode but uh, anyways let's see hopefully it will learn something um, so now in the chat is the priority uh, replay mem working so that will be next question. Please share the status so then we can move to the next step. Meanwhile, I will keep exploring some of my experiments that I'm running in the background. Oh no. Okay, it Okay, the the spaceship disappeared. <laughs> okay, it's hopefully anyway. So Okay, I will write my experiment code while I wait for your confirmation. There are so many things that you can do with this, you know, like, okay, there are actually like huge amount of research already done, but, um, but still there are like all sorts of ideas. That's why it's addictive. You just look at the code and then you think maybe we could do it in other way, you know, and um, then you can spend hours on this stuff. Okay, I see two pluses, that's great. Um, again, one thing that you should be aware is that the agent might not learn every time very stable. First of all, at least I think uh, about like 100 epochs or so, we have the epsilon getting till 10%. So that means that's quite random situation. Then again, also, mm. The initial, it, like every episode is random. There's a huge amount of randomness. It's possible that you need to run it multiple times to get a better result. It's possible that you need to wait very long time, maybe thousands of episodes or 2000 episodes or so. So it's possible that it will not work as quickly as we would like it to work. So that's, that's one, uh, one notice to be aware of it. Anyways, okay, so that's what we have here. Okay, so let's move on to the next part. So, uh, okay, if we train it for thousands of episodes, you will see that the priority um, uh, should work better. I was hoping that maybe it would give results sooner, but um, 
seems like that in my case it's it's not giving that fast results. Okay, the one thing that we could do immediately actually. Okay, let's try it. So one is that we could reduce the the um, effect of the gamma maybe. Okay, so we can add six maybe. Just don't want to play with too much with this. Oh, the replay buffer size. Please increase the replay buffer size to 5,000 at least. So the 500 is very small. It's like almost uh, meaningless. So uh, the, again, you already see there are few parameters that change everything. <laughs> so we have we have here about 10 parameters, but in reality, in these models, it easily you can have 20 parameters. So and uh, these two change everything immediately. So one is that replay buffer size should be higher and the gamma should be lower and the replay buffer size should be higher by magnitude at least because now in this case this is not anymore some random stuff this is uh, like a little bit smarter way to select the, the episodes and if I run it again hopefully now we will see the results sooner I'm not guaranteeing that we will see perfect results but at least we will see something sooner hopefully so this is the random guy it flow over out of the window and we'll see what happens with the best better better models where did I lose my okay so the loss got down see this one so loss converged a little bit okay then we got a little bit up the score by the way, the minus score doesn't mean always that everything is bad. You know, like uh, the, uh, the, the amount of uh, spending fuel, that, that is something that is important. So how, how much the agent is spending fuel, that is, uh, that is also giving a minus. But let, let me check one thing. What was the display, display factor here? I had some kind of condition for displaying. Okay, the condition is not optimal at all. So the condition here is that uh, the every 10th episode it will show something. Maybe this is not optimal. So let's rewrite it. I, I would just want to see some results sooner. I don't want to wait for, for so long time. So let's see. Okay, the, the, when we have no scores, we will look at this. And let's have also when Okay, when we have uh, all true of selecting last last if we have two two episodes with the positive score if we have two episodes with positive score so that means uh, in this case it is over zero for it in this then I want to display my agent. Okay, what it is like that. Here like that. Okay, cool. So I will add this line of the code to the um, to the jamboard as well. Uh, so you can you can have that. Oh, sorry, there's a mistake for it in all scores uh, so yeah then if you add this this line of the code the agent will be rendered more often hopefully or at good situations I mean like when it gets uh, two episodes good then you will see how the agent behaves that would be more interesting than waiting for uh, the perfect situation of um, like uh, every tenth episode so if I run it again Hopefully we will see something better sooner. But again, I never can guarantee anything with the uh, 
the reinforcement learning. So uh, the one thing that also you already understand that reinforcement learning, the loss is not looking as in the classification tasks and other tasks, you know, where the losses, losses converge very nicely. Here the loss uh, is uh, jumping all over the place. The, the scores are jumping all over the place, everything basically. So the, the only way how you can actually make sure that this works nicely is by uh, basically by, by saving the model. So you already know how to save the model, right? If you save it at the right moment when the agent has learned a lot of good things, that, 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 that is your best model. If you save it at the wrong moment when the agent is crashing all the time, then, then you should have better, like worst model. So, um, but in the best case scenario, it should kind of converge on some good values, like giving a high score, you know. But again, I cannot guarantee that this will happen with this particular model. With some other models, it might work actually. Um, so, let's see. I'm now at episode 70 and it's really, really slow because now I'm running also the video recording and stuff. But hopefully some of you already see something nice, you know, like maybe at, at um, episode 200, 500, maybe it already starts landing nicely. So that's, that's one. Okay, I think um, while this is training, so I can show you some landings of the moon, I will, uh, I will show you the next task as well. So, uh, the jump board here. I will put my, my uh, moon lander on the side and try to show you the next task. So the next task will be on the slide seven. Um, the, there, was, there are a lot of updates that can be done for the DQN and uh, so for the homework, I probably I will give you dueling DQN, but uh, there is one very simple update that you can do. It's called a double DQN, and actually one of my research work that I did myself, I covered uh, generalization of this function. So you can have like many, many uh, parallel um, Q models, and they can be selected also in some intelligent manner or random manner, it doesn't matter, like there's just, just depends on the situation. So the idea here is following that we have a new loss function and we have a new Q model. So it's actually a very simple idea. We have the Q uh, theta model and we have the Q target model. So the Q target model and Q theta model in very beginning uh, have the same weight, but when we train it, we have this some kind of uh, like target update um, threshold at which we, uh, we copy weights from the Q theta to Q target. And in that way, we stabilize the training. And that actually works really nicely. I, I would, like uh, with, a, with the moon lander, I think it gives uh, quite significant improvement. If you just lock the weights with some uh, like predefined uh, frames, uh, time steps. So the idea is that you copy the weights from this to this. You already know how to copy the weights because you know how to save them, right? So here there is the idea that ev let's say every every uh, thousand frame we copy copy weights from from Q to QT to target, right? And, but we are training only the Q target, right? Q, I mean. So the QT is just like a proxy there. So we're not training the, the QT, we're training just the, the Q. So that's quite interesting stuff here. Da, 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 da. Yep, so let's do this. Um, so there should not be that many changes. I just want to make sure that um, so this will be the next task. I think uh, 16 point 16 point4 task where we implement double DQN 
Uh, so my agent, uh, it seems like not working very well right now. It's very interesting that my agent is not learning to float around in the sky. That's most likely because I changed the gamma. So if I increase the gamma back to 0 0.9, the agent will learn uh, float quickly. So uh, that's that's a very interesting uh, observation. So you can you can play with gamma. So that's one. But let's let's make the double DQN. So to make the double DQN, we need to have another hyperparameter. So the other hyperparameter will be called target update. So we will update, let's say, every, um, let me think what should be a good value. I will double check what did I use before. Every 3000 frame. I will also update that on the uh, jump board. Again, that is hyperparameter because you can change whatever you want, right? So that's one. Um, then we will initialize model twice. So the model, where is the model? Model, model, model here. So the Q model, and we also will have the target model, so the T model, uh, or QT model, like that, that would be a little bit more proper, QT. So we have the target model and the QT model. Uh, that's great. Uh, oh man, thank you for letting me know that the code is not visible. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I added is just this line. I copied the same model uh, twice. So I will also drop here another line of the code with regards to the copying the weights. So let's see, uh, there will be the def update uh, QT model. We update QT model. So there's going to be this function. So the how we update it is by using the Qt model uh, load state dictionary from the self Q model uh, state dictionary, and we also want to update it here. Self update it here. So I will copy this this part of the code to the jump board. Uh, and also mark those few places where we had the changes, really few places is not too much. And I added also to the arguments the, um, the how, how, how often we should update that model. So I will also add that line as well in a second. So this is in the jump board already on the seventh slide. And I also added here this small line of target update. So that is just uh, how often should we update the target model. Okay, what's that? Okay, cool. So I added also that one. And now there, there just need to be a few small changes. So first small change is here in the replay. Uh, in the equation, as you know, we need to use different model here. So the QT model, the, but there is one but there. If we don't add anything here uh, else, like if we don't detach it, so we need to detach it here. If we don't detach it here, then we have very bad things happening because if we don't detach it, then it will learn also the, the QT model weights. But we don't want to learn QT model weights. We just want to learn the, the weights for the uh, Q model. So that's why I am detaching it here. So that's very actually important point. So I have updating also these few lines. Uh, so there is a change only here. Very, very subtle, very, very important change. So I'm adding this to the slide number eight. 
And now we're missing just the only last part that is the actual updating of the weights. So the updating of the weights happens while we are training the model, right? So it is somewhere here. So we'll see. We have the episodes, right? We have the frames, these. So we need some kind of counter. So T total. So this will be the counter for T is total. T total, T total. And if we add here T total plus one, or maybe I would just add it on top part of the code so I can include both, both parts here. If T total uh, is divided or modulus from args um, target update, I think it was, it was the uh, target update, yes, target update. If this is equals a zero, then we want to update the model. So there will be the agent update QT model. So that's about it. Like really subtle, subtle, really small changes, very important ones. And you can imagine like, it's, it's not much that you actually changed, but if you add those changes, you can publish your, your research and uh, like you also need to kind of uh, collect and prove that, uh, collect results and prove that that is actually better than the other models. But in general, all of this deep learning field uh, of, of reinforcement learning is still quite open. There, at, again, these are very basic models. There are much, much, much stronger models already uh, existing. And tomorrow we're going to look at another direction of the reinforcement learning using the policy directly without any Q value functions at all. So there, there are ways what to do actually. So this is not the only way how to do this. Um, so let's see full screen. Okay. Uh, let's see. Maybe we will get something good here. Um, Let's wait for, for somebody to report that the uh, DDQN is ready. If there are some problems, let me know. And that's going to be the last task for today. Um, you could try to make it uh, train so that you get nice results. You can try other environments. So if you look inside the, if you look inside the, um, uh, the the uh, OpenAI gym, right? In OpenAI gym, you can find really nice environments. So let's see what is where did I lost my spaceship? So that was the crashed version. And um, so what you can also do is to try to use uh, maybe other loss functions. The not only the uh, the uh, mean square error, you can you try to use mean absolute error and stuff. Um, because if, if you remember that mean absolute error is less, less uh, prone to the outliners. So, and uh, in reinforcement learning, we have a lot of outliners. So a lot of events can be very unpredictable. So that's why maybe the mean absolute error might be better than mean square error. So you can try out that one as well. Again, as I say, this is quite addictive. You can uh, play around with this for a long time to get high results, like just to get higher uh, the, the result there. So that's about it for today. I think, I think this is quite fun. You know, you can add, there is a lot of other games. There is the, um, the uh, mountain car game, also very fun, that you can try out in the, um, this, this car, how it's called, the, the OpenAI gym. Uh, you, you can also uh, design your rewards a little bit, you know, like for example, uh, we know that we want spaceship to be closer to the ground and not learn to just float around in the air, right? So if you have a situation when the spaceship is just floating all the time in the air and don't understand that it should start uh, approaching the ground, you can maybe uh, design your reward uh, or the gamma. So there are two ways to do this with gamma and that's what, that would be a cleaner way to have uh, like a little small nudge towards the direction of uh, approaching the ground, you know? 
So there are a lot of things you can try it out. So let's see what we have here. I just want to make some uh, episodes that we can observe nicely. Uh, so the 100 episodes, this is really a not long period. We definitely can do much better. Uh, but my computer is really slow right now. Let's see what, what we can do. Let me think. So we have some good episodes here, 22 score, but I don't see them because primarily I have this uh, constraint that I want to show the episode only when we have at least two good episodes. Hmm. So let's wait. Hopefully we will we'll get uh, something nice today. Let's wait maybe till 200 uh, episodes or so. So if, if some, some of you get some uh, so some good results, let me know. Again, saying at two a thousand twenty. What do you mean by thousand thousand? Ah, thousand twenty episode. Understood. Uh, yes, that is possible. That it you you would need to train it very long to get a nice result. But but again, this is random stuff. So anyway. Uh, if you say that I need to wait a thousand episodes, that is not very encouraging. <laughs> so let's see, I, I might might restart it. We'll try to do some hacking here. So first of all, okay, let's let's just take the the last uh, last one good episode. So that's one. Let's see what else we can change here. Replay buffer size fine. Mm -hmm. 500 hidden size, maybe we can have a little bit smaller hidden size. Also, small. let's make much smaller hidden size, the gamma a little bit, um, maybe a little bit 0 0.7, then maybe I can make a little bit uh, interesting model. So let's see if I add additional layer I don't think that that uh, that I mean more additional layers would give me better results, but maybe one additional layer would help with the small hidden size. If there is a huge hidden size, then definitely that would not help. So it, it would just take much longer to train. But let's see, maybe with the smaller hidden size, it would help. Also, the batch size maybe the batch size could be. Uh, larger, oh, oh, now it's 128, it's not too bad actually. So let's see what we have. I hope that I don't need to wait thousand episodes. If somebody finds the parameters that gives the results faster, because before the this session I tried tried playing around with it a lot actually, but uh, it always converged a little bit uh, like longer time period needed. So let's see what else we could do. Oh no, it actually like, I guess it played, but I didn't see it. Oh no, I, I missed it. I was looking at it the other way and missed it. <laughs> okay, let's see. Or maybe I didn't miss it. With this configuration, I think I have seen it that, that, that it works after about like 200 episodes or so. So let's wait a little bit. Hopefully we'll get something. If not, then we'll 
then we'll end with, with the option to, for you to explore it yourself, but it should get something soon. So normally what, what is uh, happening is that the loss function in the beginning, it's kind of converging, then, then it's uh, uh, with, the, with these time intervals where we are updating the QT, right? In those intervals, we should see some uh, jumps in the loss function. And uh, then it again converges, jump, converge, jump, converge, and stuff like that. Also, maybe the uh, epsilon might be smaller or larger. Like, it's really hard to, to determine the best situation. So, so far today, before the, uh, the session, I, so when I run it, I observed many times this situation that the agent learns to uh, float around in the air forever. So uh, that's, that's something that uh, you should be aware of. If, if that happens, you can try playing with gamma, with the uh, rewards and stuff like that. So now it seems like that it's starting to float around. Okay, the one thing that I see that is not optimal is that we have 500 steps. Maybe maybe it's too much. Oh no, yeah, the agent. Oh, it flew out of the range. So there was one good score here, uh, 194. There was this one, so that's that was ni nice run here. Uh, but we definitely could could, could do uh, could get uh, more nice runs. Okay, the one, yes, no. <laughs> so we have already two nice runs, that's great. But, uh, but the agent is still not very smart, unfortunately. So because I see those nice runs, I want to wait a little bit more. And the worst thing happens when you start changing those things and models and the algorithms and the loss functions, and you think that you, you will find that the, uh, that the, the score will rise, you can spend like hours with this. So the loss kind of gets down the agent lives longer time period. So you can see very nicely the correlation here. Okay, the agent flies, please land in between. No, oh. but, but we, we see very nice uh, correlation. The episodes get longer, the agent learns to hover and the loss gets smaller and the score gets higher. But of course, this is not like dramatic, you know, because there's so many random things in this uh, reinforcement environments. Um, so again, another thing somebody could research is the, that right now we have a very naive way to update the, uh, the target uh, model. So maybe you could look up if somebody have already researched the uh, smarter ways to to have like a better better like periods of when you should update the target model and also um, maybe you should have set of target models and how to choose them uh, for the loss function. So there's a lot of ideas that could be explored, but I want to find see if we can get some nice landing. If somebody gets a nice landing with some configuration, please type in the chat at what uh, episode. I see that, uh, uh, okay, we have we have landing, right. The other, so almost. <laughs> Again, you're starting to hit good, good runs. So if, if in your case you don't get anything good, you, I can uh, just show you what are my parameters right now. So I have target update of 3000, hidden size of 32, uh, the gamma of 0 0.7, and the uh, model looks like this with the two, uh, two hidden layers there. So that's what I have.
I w just want to wait a little bit more. Uh, so again, if you get some nice results, please type in as how long did you have to wait. The very interesting thing is with the gamma 0 0.7, I don't get the effect of hovering. So the effect of hovering was with gamma 0 0.9. So if, if you want your agent to learn to hover, then maybe you should work with 0 0.9. Nice to see that somebody gets a nice uh, landing at 100 episode. Yeah, this, this is not, not a really predictable way, but um, at least you understand now how to, how to get this uh, working. And there is a lot of things you can explore yourself. So I see some hovering happening. So if I, if I get the capped out um, steps at 500 that means that the agent is learned to hover and uh, and thinks that there there should be no reason to land <laughs> another thing that can can be probably helpful is to maybe have larger, uh, larger uh, replay memory. So I don't want to stop the training process now because otherwise then I need to wait again for a long time. But I also encourage you to try to have the uh, replay buffer size, try to do this 10,000, 20,000 or something. It, it might help as well. I mean like uh, you would get some uh, some values that would be useful. Uh, also, let, let me uh, let me just uh, tell a few more words about the uh, replay memory. <laughs> uh, so the re re replay memory uh, right now the new priority that I'm giving it's like the med median priority of all everything else that we have ever seen so far uh, so this might be also not the best way uh, the absolutely best way would be to, to calculate the loss value and store it immediately here or maybe we can mark like uh, that we need to calculate that value and store it uh, when we are doing the pass of the training um, there could be also other ways like th this value should could be like uh, that we want to have a maximum of priorities for example max so that means that then we would uh, prioritize all of our recent experiences as the best ones so that 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 might work as well um, also this procedure maybe we can have a little bit of uh, powering of the probabilities to make it not so uh, even, so there's there's a way of doing that. There, if you read the paper on the uh, prioritized replay memory, they use even more advanced method for selecting the probabilities. So it seems like that it landed pretty close to the flag already. Uh, okay, so the landing happening. Please don't help. So did my agent learn to hover. Oh no. Yes, so he, he learned to hover for too long. But you can see that it kind of learns first to hover and then it tries to learn the landing. So, okay, we see again another attempt. This is like a SpaceX, you know. <laughs> I'm not sure, like, most likely the SpaceX is not using the uh, reinforcement learning for landing the starships, but it could be done. So, anyways. <clears throat> That's it for today. I uh, hope it is a fun, fun thing to end all our uh, like, uh, research together. So tomorrow we're gonna look at more advanced uh, reinforcement learning model. Maybe it's not actually that more advanced, but it's a different way how to solve the same, uh, so same problem and a little bit different problems as well. And then you will have time up till May 
end of the May to submit all of the homeworks. I already started grading them and then we'll end the course. So that's, that's it uh, for today. Hope it is uh, fun and interesting and we'll meet tomorrow.